In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own Neo Soul backing tracks to jam along with. So let's get straight into it. So here I'm using Reaper. This is the program I use to make my backing tracks. Uh, the techniques and stuff I'll be showing you is not so much how to use the software, but how to write music within the software. So this can apply to any digital audio workstation you're using, whether that's Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase or whatever. Okay, so let's jump into it. So I've loaded in all the instruments that I am going to be using today. So I've got a kick drum. So let's take a listen to the kick drum first. Let's take a listen to the snare. Let's take a listen to the closed hi-hat. And we'll take a listen to the open hi-hat. I've also got this bass plugin which sounds a bit like this. Okay, it's just a free bass plugin uh, because my bass guitar is not working at the moment. Uh, I've also got this plugin. This is the Neural DSP Archetype Pliny plugin. Now, I would highly, highly recommend grabbing uh, some of these plugins because they're really, 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 really good. So basically, this is the settings I use for all of my YouTube videos. As you can see, I barely even touched the settings on the amp, and it sounds great out the gate. Uh, all I've done is added a bit of reverb, and that's it. Great plugins, very versatile, can do a lot of things, okay? On top of that, I've got, and on top of that, I've got Serum, which is a really, really awesome synth, okay? Let's get started creating the backing track. So. My project is set to 90 beats per minute. Uh, I just think that's a really good tempo for Neo Soul. Sort of the 80 to 100 BPM range is what I usually go for. So let's start with the kick drum. What we're gonna do is we are gonna set the kick drum to beats one and three. We're gonna change things later, but this is how we're gonna get started, okay? So the kick drum goes on beats one and three. As you can see, these lines, these grid lines, they're each beat. And as you can see up here, this is the first bar, this is the second bar, this is the third bar and so on, okay? So beats one and three, our, our kick drum. Then for our snare, we are going to place it on beats two and four. Okay, so beat two and beat four here. Okay, so so far we've got this sound. Then we're going to apply our closed hi-hat. So with the closed hi-hat, I like to put it on every single eighth note. Uh, let's set the grid to eighth notes to start off with. So now as you can see, the lines are showing us all of our eighth notes. We're going to Copy and paste that over to every single eighth note. And we've got a little beat that sounds a bit like this. Sounds pretty good, okay? I am just creating something off the spot. I don't have anything in my mind of what we're gonna do. I'm just experimenting here with you, just showing you the sort of process I go through, okay? So what we could do is maybe create another track, put every other hi-hat on there, and just pan them a little bit. So I'm gonna pan I'm going to call this closed hi-hat right and I'll call this closed hi-hat left and we're going to pan them just to the left and right just a little bit just to create a more interesting sound okay so let's pan them 10% each way so now we've got sort of a stereo sort of sound with our hi-hats It's very, very subtle, but I'm sure you can notice it. Now what we can do is we can add our open hi-hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it on the last eighth note of the bar. So we've got... Sounds pretty cool. Now we're just going to experiment a little bit and try and place the kick drum in a few different places to create a bit of an interesting groove. Um, so I'm going to set the, kick, uh, the, the grid to 16th notes now. And... Uh, yeah, let's do that. So, sounds great. Okay, so that's our drum rhythm. Let's just listen one more time. Okay, good. Now I'm going to copy and paste that over for four bars. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And now we can add a bass line. So what I like to do with the bass line is I like to follow the kick drum with the uh, bass guitar. So let's create a bar here um, for the bass. 
And what we want is, let's go for a, a C. And what we were playing on the one, all the way through to the, to there. Then we're adding, here as well okay and you've got to adjust your velocities because this is going to be smacking the hell out of the bass i'm going to bring it down a little bit so we've got a nice chilled out sort of vibe with the bass so here's the first bar cool i do have a chord progression in mind so i'm just going to run with that okay so we're going to go c d e g okay so d and then this goes up to e and then this goes up to G for the final bar. And let's have a listen to that. Uh. Okay, now this will sound a little bit better once we've got the guitar involved. So the chord progression I'm going to play is a C major 7. I'm going to play a D7, E minor 7. G7. So let's get my guitar plugged in and then we'll get straight into it. Now what I like to do with the guitars is I also like to pan the guitars left and right and I've panned them 100% left and right so we get basically we're playing the same thing twice but on one side we've got one take and on the other side we've got the other take okay so, so as you can hear that first guitar is going to be completely panned to the left. All right let's just have a little mess about with it just see what I can come up with uh, I'm going to set the metronome to count me in before playing. And we'll do that for one bar. Okay, I think I've got an idea for a, for a strumming pattern. Let's give it a go. Let's record it in. Um, count in before recording. lovely stuff okay now something really important to note about creating your own backing tracks is that you want to keep it very simple because we're going to be improvising over the top so you want to leave space for your lead playing so that there's no clashing between sort of like the guitar parts the only things you kind of really want to have intricacy intricacy with is sort of the rhythm section that's going to give you your groove and the drums don't really have any sort of melody to them so they're not going to clash with anything that you're going to be playing on the guitar. Okay, so let's track the second guitar, which is going to be the exact same thing, but just pan to the right. Very nice. So I'm done with the guitar. I'm just going to show you the difference uh, in sound when we pan the guitars left and right as opposed to when we just have them in the middle. So let's just take a listen. This is it, pan left and right. And now mono. Doesn't sound quite as good. Yeah, always pan your guitars left and right. That sounds really nice, okay? So we've basically got most of our backing track here. And I'm just gonna add a synth, okay? So um, we're playing C major 7, D7, E minor 7, G7. So let's put in uh, some MIDI here. Bar 1, we're playing C major 7. Okay, let's get a nice sound first. Okay. So let's just let's put in the chord first, actually. I know this sounds pretty terrible. Okay, let's just... Oh, that is loud. Let's turn that down a bit. So 
I'm just at the moment using some presets that I've downloaded. I'm not creating any new synth sounds here. Um, just to save time, okay? Now you can create your own synth sounds, but again, that takes a while. Let's have a listen to this one. Mm, not a fan of this one. Let's keep going. I haven't found the right one yet. Okay, I'm gonna go with, I think, the Dawn Chorus one. I like that one the most. Sounds good, so let's apply it to the entire chord progression now. So we've got a C major 7, we've got a D7, we've got an E minor 7. Let's get rid of that. And then we've got a G7, so we've got to play this up and G. That is G, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, and let's bring this note down an octave for good voice leading. So that's the F. We're going to put that down there. So altogether our chord progression sounds like this on the synth. And I've set it to uh, loop, so let's try that again. Lovely stuff, okay? So now let's listen to the entire thing. And now I can just mix it a little bit to just make it sound a little bit better. So the guitars I think needs to come, come down a little bit, so does the synth. So let's bring the guitars and the synth down a little bit. I think the bass is at a good level, the kick's at a good level, all the drums are at a good level. Maybe I can bring the open hi-hat up a little bit. Maybe we can add some reverb to the hi-hats. This fills the space up a little bit, so let's try that out. Um, okay, let's add this reverb here. And we're gonna just bring the reverb down there, okay? Let's have a listen to that. Cool, that sounds nice. Awesome, so let's have a listen to it with everything else. Great stuff, and now we can just copy and paste this entire thing. Copy, paste four times, two, oh, three, Four. Um, just gonna get that track and that track, and we've got a backing track here. So that's a 42 second backing track. Maybe we could add a chorus by maybe um, changing the drum beat or adding some extra bits in. Um, but this is the main bulk of how you create a backing track, okay? And then of course you can add sort of like some mastering plugins to kind of beef up the sound a little bit. But this isn't really a mixing tutorial, this is more of a composition tutorial, so we won't do that today. But if you want to see that sort of thing, let me know in the comments and I can give you some mixing and mastering tips for your recordings. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this video, I hope you learned a lot, I hope you are uh, inspired now to create your own backing tracks um, and jam along with them. If you want to jam along with this backing track, I'll link it down in the description for you and you can grab it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn how to write the chord progression that I came up with in this video and awesome chord progressions of your own, then you can grab a copy of my book, Chord Charisma 2.0. The first two chapters are available down in the description and you can learn a little bit more about the book now. Chord Charisma 2.0 is a complete guide to writing incredible jaw-dropping chord progressions. Everything you need to know about harmony and chords is contained within this book. It will take you through the basics of building tension and releasing your chord progressions and will build upon this foundation with more advanced concepts like jazzy extended chords, borrowed chords from other keys and cool substitutions to take your chord progression knowledge and ability to the next level. There is a serious amount of content in this book but it's laid out in a structured fashion with action steps at the end of each chapter to make sure you've fully internalised and are actually able to use what you've learnt from the book in your playing. That's really, really important. It's a very practical book, which will get you writing new progressions straight away, guaranteed. You'll also have access to personal feedback on your progressions from me via the Chord Charisma Facebook community. And as a bonus, I've thrown in a soloing guide to go with the book. 
so you won't get lost when you're trying to play licks over your new and improved chord progressions. Head to the link in the description to grab your copy of Chord Charisma 2.0 today.